The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. The title of my message today is Where God Guides, He Provides. If God gives you a vision, He's going to make a provision. So where God guides, he provides. And I want to talk about um, Father Abraham. He's called the father of our faith. Please talk later. Genesis 22 verses 1 through 14. I'm not going to read everything. In here, you all know the story. I'll tell you a little bit of the story, and then I'll read some important scripture. I just want to say that last night and this morning and throughout the week, I was thinking about this message and uh, how many would like to know, like if you have a grandfather and, um, you know, you, you never met him, but you want to know all about him because he's one that by, by whose name the family is named, and you want to know what kind of a grandfather you had, you know. So, uh, you know, that's the same way it is with Father Abraham. He's like our father, our grandfather our ancestor, and we want to know what he was like because we're supposed to be imitators of our father, like father, like son. Okay, for the ladies, like mother, like daughter. Sarah, well, imitate Sarah, the, the wife of Abraham. Uh, but you can also imitate your father, Father Abraham. So God told Abraham to go up to the mountain of Moriah and asked him to offer up his son, Isaac, that he loves, offer him as a burnt offering on the mountain that God will show him. So verse 3, Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place of which God had told him. So he was obedient to do what God says to do. How many know that when you hear God's voice, the voice of the Spirit, you ought to do what God says. Okay? Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men. This is the first statement of faith by Father Abraham. It's a statement of faith. He makes several statements of faith. This is the first one that he makes after Isaac was born and when he was tried in this trial to bring up his son and offer him as a sacrifice. And his statement is this. Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad, meaning Isaac, will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So this is a statement of faith. What did he say? He said, me and Isaac are going to go over there and we're going to come back. Now, he knew he was going to offer him as a sacrifice, but he also knew that God was going to raise him from the dead if he offered him as a sacrifice, because God told Abraham in the past that in, in Isaac shall thy seed be. 
So he knew that God is the one who is able to raise from the dead, and he believed that God is able to raise from the dead. And he is called the God of the resurrection, and this is what all Jesus did. He came and died on the cross for us, and he arose from the dead, and that's what secured our salvation, is his resurrection power. Okay? So he said, abide ye here, With the donkey and I and the lad will go yonder and come back and worship again. Uh, go and worship, I mean, and, and, and come back to you. That's a statement of faith. Now we're going to learn from Father Abraham how we ought to act as we walk with the Lord. He walked with God and he believed God and he understood God. You've got to understand what God is saying. That's part of the problem is we don't understand what God is saying sometimes. And we're in a hurry. Like the guy that went to India instead of another place. See, God began to talk to him and he said, I want you to go to India. And he packed up and went to India for five years he had no fruitfulness in his work and in his labor, and he cried to the Lord and said, Lord, why did you bring me here? And the Lord said, you did not finish listening to me. I was saying, I was trying to tell you to go to Indiana. <laughs> Sometimes we're in a hurry, we only hear half of what God is saying. So, now Abraham and Isaac are walking, and, uh, you know, Isaac is carrying the wood and, and the fire, and he asks his father, he says, Dad, where, where is that uh, lamb that we're supposed to sacrifice? Where's the lamb? I mean... There's a wood, there's a fire. You got the knife. Well, he didn't say that, but he understood that. But where's the lamb? So this is the second faith statement that Abraham makes. Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Now, he was telling the truth because he believed God. He believed that somehow God is going to provide a lamb. So I was a a statement of faith, folks. Remember, I mean, when you study Abraham, we are imitators of our father Abraham. And, and he spoke by faith all the time, you know. I mean, people criticize confession as possession and all of that, but I'll tell you what. Abraham started it before, before even there was a faith teaching. You know, the nine points that they give you about how to develop your faith and how to speak faith and how to confess your, the word. I, I tell you, that was, I was, it was there before uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland came on the scene. <laughs> or Kenneth Hagin. But the scripture is clear throughout the pages of the word that it's important to remember and to know that what you say is what you get. And so if you say blessings, guess what you're going to get? Blessings. If you speak curses, guess what? You're going to get curses. It boomerangs. Okay, so it's best to give blessings and not to cur give curses. It's best not to murmur, folks. It's best to keep your opinion in your bedroom 
when you come to church or when it comes to giving somebody an advice, unless you have a godly advice, shut up and sit down. And I don't apologize for that. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble. Like Peter used to put his foot in his mouth all the time. Now he believed God is going to provide a sacrifice. So in verse 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. Now let me tell you this, God already provided that ram. Before he told Abraham to go up to the mountain, he already knew that there was going to be a ram, and he put that ram there and got him caught in the thicket, waiting for Abraham to get there to offer him as a sacrifice. And Abraham took the ram. This is after he was going to kill his son and God told him not to do that. The angel of the Lord stopped him from killing his son, and he said, that's not the message I'm trying to convey. My message is to let you know that I'm sending my beloved son as a sacrifice for humanity. And there was a substitute sacrifice on behalf of Isaac. That's the ram. But Jesus came as a substitute, as the Lamb of God, because John the Baptist, he's the one who gave the answer to Isaac. Years later, hundreds of years later, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. That's what Abraham was talking about. He prophesied that in his faith statement. God will provide himself a lamb, And the lamb showed up, and John the Baptist declared him as the lamb. And that's why we're saved. We needed salvation. We needed someone to die on our behalf so that we will not go to eternal damnation and be condemned and go to the lake of fire. But God has provided And Abraham, so let let me finish reading this here. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son, as a substitute for his son. And that's what God did. He offered his son as a substitute for all of us. Now, let let me tell you this. There's salvation in no other name. No other name given under heaven by which men will be saved except the name of Jesus. That's the only way to heaven. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's the only way somebody will be saved. And that settles the issue. Is it, it's God's way or the highway. And Abraham called the name of the place. It says here Jehovah Jireh, but really there's no J in Hebrew, so it's Jehovah or Yahweh Yireh, which means this. Which means this, God will see to it that it is done. Or God, that's a literal translation, but it really means God will provide. So God is a provider. God will provide. Abraham believed that God will provide. Abraham, your grand, your Ancestor, Abraham, your grandfather, Abraham, believed 
that God will provide. And he even named the name of the place God will provide. So Philippians 4.19 was not wrong by saying, My God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God will provide. Somebody said, I'm not interested. Well, then you're not interested in God because God wants and he obligated himself to provide for his children, for his people. You know, the children of Israel went through the wilderness for 40 years and their clothes did not wear out and their sandals and their shoes stayed the same, just as brand new as the day they bought them. He provided. He provided manna and he provided quail and they ate and they were strong. And I, I believe they had all the vitamins in those foods that they ate that God sent down from heaven in that manna. God will provide. God will provide. Don't you ever worry, Jesus said, about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink and what we're going to put on. He says God will provide. He provides for the birds of the air and God spends millions of dollars a day to feed the birds. Shall he not clothe you, O you of little faith? God will provide. God has a provision. God provided his son for our salvation. And with him come all the benefits and all the promises. All the promises of God are yea in him and amen in him. 2 Corinthians 1.20 if you have Christ, you have everything. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's spiritual things and that's material things. Everything that you will ever need will be provided for you because my God will supply. God brings provision to his Children, you will never lack. Amen. That's the God I'm talking about. He's a real God. He's a God of miracles. And he, if he will have to, uh, to, to bring gold or, or silver uh, to you in the fish's mouth, you better be going fishing, though. <laughs> Got to do something about it. But God will provide my God will bring provision. And that, that was the conclusion of Abraham. He said, I, I bet you he got so excited because he put his, his son on, on the altar and he was going to kill him. And God says, don't touch him. And then he looked and he saw the ram and he got so excited. You know, ran over and picked up the lamb, by the ram by the, by the horns and offered the ram as a substitute for Isaac. And, and God looked around, couldn't find somebody to atone for us. There was nobody available. And then all of a sudden, he looked, he said, well, uh, you know, it's got to be me. Who else? I don't have to look around among people. Nobody qualifies to substitute for these people that are going on their way to the lake of fire. I, I'm going to have to give myself. 
So God became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Why did he become flesh? So that he can die. So he can atone for us. So he, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Praise God. You know, uh, Abraham understood the gospel before the gospel was ever understood. I, I tell you, I, I was reading that. It's, it's amazing when you read the scripture. The New Testament explains the Old Testament. So Galatians 3, 8, it says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. How are they going to be blessed? How are all nations going to be blessed? Because he is the father of all nations. Remember, his name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. He says, you're going to be the father of many nations. God was already working on the lamb, and he is working on the provision. In fact, when Adam sinned, God already had the lamb ready. God was not taken by surprise when Adam sinned. God didn't say, oops. God doesn't have an oops in his vocabulary. Jesus is our substitute. We were condemned going to the lake of fire. But Christ became our substitute and he saved us. Thank God I'm saved. I can rejoice in the Lord always because Jesus saved me. Pastor Daniels, he always says he was on his way to hell and God saved him. Amen. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, all things have become. I've passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So Abraham is the father of our faith. Let's read in Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Let's see what Abraham did before, before Isaac was born. This man, Abraham, was a man of faith. I'm proud of grandpa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. My grandpa was great, a great man of God. He was a man of faith. Amen. Your grandpa. We're all related here. Amen. So, Romans 4, 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was so full of faith. God told him, you're going to have a son through Sarah. <clears throat> he already messed up. Went on into Hagar, and they had Ishmael, and that's fine. He's, Ishmael is his son. And God will bless Ishmael, the scripture says. And, and Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 years old, and you... How can you ever believe something against the natural law? I mean, 
over here, St. Luke's Hospital, they gave him, uh, they checked Abraham and Sarah, and they told them, absolutely, you're crazy, you cannot have children. <laughs> then they went to the Rome Hospital, and they said, oh, we agree with St. Luke's <laughs> diagnosis. Abraham, your, your sperm is dead. Sarah, your eggs are dead. You can't have children. We tested everything. No way, no possible way you can have a child. But God said, against the law of nature, against the laws of the land, against the law that we have, against medical science. Are you with me? Because medical science could say you're sick, but if God says you're healed, you're healed. Which one are you going to believe? Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Amen. So Abraham got healed. You know how he got healed? He did not consider his own body being dead. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was strong in faith. Strong in faith. My grandpa was strong in faith. And he walked by faith, not by sight. He, he did not stagger at the promise of God Amen. through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was going around in the streets of Rome saying, I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> glory. I'm pregnant. My wife and I are pregnant. The word of God says so, and I believe what God says, no matter what man says, no matter what the impossibilities are, God's word is possible. He makes a provision for his people to receive a miracle. My God is faithful. He will stand behind his word to bring it to pass. And we are to be imitators of our father Abraham, who was strong. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, May the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.